Greetings, Poké fans! Michael here, and I am a Pokémon YouTuber, a profession known around the world for reacting to Jaden Animation's videos about Pokémon. I myself have done it once before. Years ago, I reacted to her video about Pokémon Ranger, and I am back today to react to her newest video because I can tell just from the thumbnail it is about Pokémon XD Gale of Darkness. It, along with Pokémon Coliseum, are spin-off games that came out on the GameCube, and I have loved them ever since I was a kid. I think they're so cool and interesting and unique and I have tried to show the world how cool and interesting and unique they are in a lot of different content over the years. And God, it just performs way worse than main series. No one cares about these games and it's so frustrating. So I am hoping Jaden talking about that will change that. I did not get permission from Jaden to make this video, but I have it on good authority that she likes it when people react to her videos. So if I was told wrong, I'm really sorry, Jaden. Uh, please, please don't hate me. In fact, I would like you to like me. I would be honored. I've played a lot of Pokemon in my days, and by that, I mean I've played the same Pokemon game with various different skins. But I'm here today to showcase one of, if not the most unique ideas for a Pokemon game Nintendo yes. has published for our tiny little hearts. And she that understands. Game is called Pokemon XD Gale, Gale of, Darkness. of Darkness. XD. A bit unfortunate, but it came. Uh, yeah. It Okay, XD predates that being like a meme, I'm pretty sure. Rar XD year unknown throughout the mid 2000s, 2004. Oh, XD came out in 2005. Well, that's devastating. Came out in 2005, so they get a pass. Why am I talking about- Oh, I paused too soon. <laughs> about it, I think it's an underground game not enough people know about. It yes! It does something different, kind of shakes up the formula. It's constantly overshadowed by its predecessor, Pokemon Coliseum. I mean, true, but even then, like, nobody cares about Coliseum. Yeah, okay, I played it as a kid. I'm very biased. Is that yes! what you wanted? Wait, if you've not no, heard of hey, no, we're not biased. We have good taste. It's still fun as an adult. I mean, it's got older Pokemon game mechanical issues, but it's still great. You get to do crime. It or played it, you're in for a treat today. The game opens up to a cargo boat, the SS Libra, out at sea where we find the captain and guy who steers standing at the helm. All is <laughs> calm and serene when suddenly they get swatted. And it's not no ordinary SWAT today, folks. No, no, sir. This is a Lugia SWAT. They run out to see what's going on, and the captain looks up and makes this, this face thing... as if he wants to kiss Lugia passionately on <laughs> the lips. But Lugia's not here for kisses. He's here for the opposite of kisses. Which is crime. He Yes! Crime! In all seriousness, though, Shadow Lugia is one of the coolest things they've ever done. And I'm so disappointed they haven't done anything similar since. I believe Shadow Lugia was designed by James Turner, who would go on to become like a mainline Pokemon game designer for Game Freak. Hyper beams the cargo ship and then steals it. You heard me right, just blasts the thing point blank and takes it away. Yep. Lugia's ship now. The presumably only two people on the entire boat fall into the water and are left to just drown in the ocean, I guess. Oh, I never thought about them drowning because I guess they are very far away from anyone who can rescue them. Maybe they have a phone? Although it is 2005. Well, that was a bit raw. What are we, a minute in and two people are dead? <laughs> Gen 10 could never. Hard cut to me because that's more important. You play as this boy kid. Greetings, Poké fans. Michael here. Another reason this is one of the best Pokemon games. The canonical protagonist name is Michael. I didn't even have to change it. It named Michael, but actually his name is Jaden now because that's me. The game. I mean, I get it. Throws you into the middle of this intense looking fight between a Salamence and Metagross. Oh, the battle Both sim. I never 50. used I don't know this. Where I am, what the stakes are, who I am. But this battle seems really important and tough, so I'm going to give it my all and immediately Oko it. I did it. Oh Straight my god, black. that Metagross. <laughs> that, that is brutal. I don't know if the Pokemon Center is going to fix that. I did it! Screen goes black. I open my eyes, everything's blurry. Wake, Wake up, Jaden, you've been, been in a coma for 15 years. years. Turns out I live in a friendly laboratory run by this Professor Crane and his lab guys. I get up and the guy running the battle simulation tells me how good of a battler I've become. 
Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> then he immediately negs me by telling me it's about time I go out and get myself more Pokemon besides my one lame Eevee. Backhanded compliment at a child, but I'll take it, I think. I go- Oh, no, I mean, he's, he's just encouraging you to do your- Best. You handled a Salamence and a Metagross? Like that whole thing? You can you can do better. I believe in you. Also, side note, I always thought it was so cool. Like, what a cool childhood to have where you just live in a Pokemon lab. Like this big building. Like, ah, oh, that'd just be so fun. Go into Crane's office where him and my mom are talking, and he says he heard from the battle coach that my battling skills have improved dramatically. I love how they all just kind of wobble a little bit. And how proud he is of me. To which my own mom tells him to stop giving me compliments and praise because I'm gonna end up spoiled rotten. I don't know <laughs> what kind of a response that is to a child receiving praise. Either I'm already a cocky little bastard, or I'm being currently emotionally neglected by everyone in this building. Oh Whatever no! Is, I don't think it's healthy for my mental development. To make this mother look even worse, we realize her only other child, Jovi, is missing and no one is looking for her. The world is only filled with overpowered wild rabbit animals and crazy people. No, I'm sure it's fine you haven't started looking for her. Keep doing what you're doing. I get a lead saying- uh, I remember you, you do have to go find her in the game. I remember when I was a kid, it took me so long to find her. <laughs> Like a solid 20 minutes. She really likes hanging out with family friend, mad scientist, Dr. Kaminko. So I head over to his house and I'm about to knock on his creepy door when this tiny little blind man, Chobin, the doctor's assistant, walks up and is like, burglar! And challenges me to a battle to which I win because he only has a level five sun curve. <laughs> Jovi comes out and is like, oh, hi, big brother. It's Jovi. Did you get lost, big brother? Silly big brother. Jovi will guide you back home. Oh, yeah. Okay. You don't find her under the table. Wait, there's definitely, I thought there was a part where you look for her, you find her under a table? Or maybe I like didn't talk to the right guy. I don't know. I remember the early game taking me way longer than it should have, but clearly I'm a bit fuzzy on the details. All right, I see why no one was looking for her now. We return <laughs> home to the lab and they present me with a snag machine. That is so cool. So cool. The Coliseum snag machine was cool, but this one is like, like what a cool thing to just wear this full arm machine on one arm. That's like, what the games are amazing. A machine that allows the user to catch shadow Pokemon, which are Pokemon that have been so abused that they turn evil. Now, they're saying they haven't seen or heard of any shadow Pokemon that exist anymore because they've all been purified years ago, but who knows when they could start popping up again. Better be safe than sorry. Bam, some guys from a secret organization <laughs> called Cypher bust into the lab, beat everyone up, steal Professor Crane, show off their shadow Pokemon, and run off to their secret base to never be seen again. Well, I'll be the last. <laughs> God, she is so good with the comedic timing. Oh, there's Jovi on the floor where she should remain. She's in shambles, not knowing what to do, but then decides they're going to complete their purification chamber in his honor because shadow Pokemon are back and they want to do something about it. They sent me off to this seaside town Gadion port to retrieve a machine part they need. And Jovi pesters our mom to come with because Jovi doesn't think I can handle going out on my own. And Jovi Ugh. needs to hold my hand and guide her big brother the whole way. Okay, not only does this little snot talk in the third person for no reason, maybe our mom didn't care enough to get us any education. <laughs> Perhaps she was worried the teacher would give us a compliment, heaven forbid. But she's also the most annoying character I've ever witnessed in any media, and I've watched an episode of My Hero Academia with a grape kid in it. We got to <laughs> So in Colosseum, you have the character Rui follow you the whole time. So she, you, once she arrives, she's following you the entire game because she's who sees the shadow Pokemon. I thought Jovi was gonna do the same when I played. I was like, because she does follow you like Rui does for part of the story. And I just assumed, oh, it, that's gonna be the same thing. Now, thank goodness I was wrong. I will say though, the character's moped is uh, probably more environmentally friendly than uh, Wes's large single wheeled hover motorcycle thing with an enormous like piped engine. But Wes's was a cooler vehicle. Adian port and not two seconds pass until Jovi pisses off this random guy, Zook, who happens to be the buffest man in the world. He's about to punch <laughs> her and I'm about to do nothing about it. When this old man and his color coded henchmen step in and obliterate his shadow Zangoose. Old man. 
I was about to be free of everything that is bad in my life. <laughs> and you took that away from me. We get the part, head back, and mom tells me about this spot in Agate Village called the Relic Stone where you can naturally purify Pokemon. I don't know why you're making your own purifying chamber then when there's a rock that already does that. I go to Agate and this very enthusiastic man with a Pikachu shows me the stone and I'm like, cool. To which he's like, by the way, my friend Vander might know where Cypher took Crane. Oh, okay. I go talk to Vander and he goes <laughs> to this random spot in the desert on my map and is like, oh, they're right here. I saw them. What were you doing out there? That's literally just sand. <laughs> wow, would you look at that? <laughs> Huh. I start in full A fun fact about the Ore region where this takes place is that it's based on Arizona. Uh, so that's why a lot of it is just desert. But the XD map is expanded. It encompasses a larger area than the Coliseum map did. So I'm guessing part of it is supposed to be Southern California, maybe? Anyways, uh, the Shadow Pokemon Lab has really dope music. Dun, 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 Wait, I just realized at some point in this, she's gonna bring up Mirror B. And I use Mirror B music in all my videos. Well, not all of them, most of them. I use his Coliseum battle music, but his XD battle music is like, it's it's so fire. And she's gonna talk about it, I'm certain. Ultrating the base, battling all the grunts that fall from the ceiling, snagging any shadow Pokemon I find, until I reach Pink Hatsune Miku, who's trying to get <laughs> information out of Crane about purifying shadow Pokemon. I battle her and win, which means I get to unkidnap him. And while heading out, I find this data ROM on the ground. Huh. This seems very important and like it has a lot of secret information about Cypher on it. Yeah. Convenient. Brain returns to the lab and everyone's happy and then they send me to Pyrite Town to find Ned, a guy that should be able to- This music that I hear playing is the Shadow Lab theme. I know the music of this game disturbingly well. E equals Minecraft squared. All right. Crack the ROM and access all the information on it. So I head there and he's like, yeah, we can crack this, smile. While he's hacking it, I go out and play around in a random cave and run into Mirror B. Yes! That was a little excessive, I apologize. It doesn't do much in this game, honestly, but I just want to make sure you know he exists and listen to his music. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. I go check on Ned again. Yes, and his music in Coliseum is what is the background for most of my videos on this channel. <laughs> and Cypher's bust and beat everyone up and kidnapped another person. Have you guys min-maxed how to kidnap people or something? You're two for two at this point and are scarily efficient at it. They tried a hostage situation the data ROM back and even though I beat up this big man and take all his shadow Pokemon, <laughs> Net still wusses out and gives the ROM back. He thought he was being two steps ahead because he saved all the information on his server already, but Cypher just logs on and deletes everything anyway. Net said, oh, right. I was confused as to where this was happening. And then I'm remembering you have to fight through the whole ONBS building, which was like totally abandoned in Coliseum. One thing that's really cool is XD is one of the few true sequels in Pokemon. It's XD and Black 2, White 2. Every, I, in regards to like games with the traditional main series mechanics. So it's really cool to go back and see how things have changed in those games. Not just like, oh, here's the same thing, but it's been modernized. It's like, oh, this was an abandoned building and now it's a news station. That's fun. Because the only thing he remembers from the ROM was that Cypher was behind the disappearance of the SS Libra and they're about to attack this city nearby called Fennec and someone needs to go warn them. <laughs> I guess I'm just Mr. Scooter across the desert and save everyone today, aren't I? <laughs> I head to Fennec to warn the mayor about the attack, and as soon as I arrive, this lady hits me with a confetti cannon, congratulates me on being the millionth visitor to the city, and shoos me away to celebrate at Real Gam Tower. I try to get ah, around here- Because there are secrets abounding because this is important, but she's determined to gatekeep me no matter what I do. So I just go there and realize she literally sent a child to illegally gamble his life away. Ah, the good old days of Pokemon where there was casinos. Wow, no one in this region likes children, do they? <laughs> After not being- I mean, it's not a very hospitable region. Able to figure out how to play bingo, I head back, sneak into the mayor's house, distract his house sitter with music, and find out the mayor was trying to write a note to Justy, the city's gym leader, warning him about the cipher attack. I don't know why the mayor was trying to ask this random gym guy to help, but he was kidnapped halfway through writing it, so I guess it doesn't matter. Cy 
Well, he is the best battler in the city. He's not very good, but he is the best one. Ever realizes I now know what's up and everyone in town reveals themselves to be disguised cypher grunts. Oh I thought that was crazy. <laughs> Oh my god, they kidnapped the entire town. I don't care what kind of organization you're from, if you can successfully kidnap a village, you've earned my respect. I beat up Cypher, rescue their shadow Pokemon. Wait, I wanted to see what her team was. So I don't recall what team I used as a kid. I remember some of the members, like I know I used Camerupt and Electrode. Oh, and Vaporeon. I'm remembering this better than I thought I would. But when I played through on this channel, like gosh, over five years ago now, this team is not the same as mine, but it's close. Jolteon, Walrein, Breloom, Gardevoir, Houndoom, and Zangoose. And then I think, okay, then I swapped in the Shadow Salamence for the final battle. Rescue their Shadow Pokemon and free literally everyone in the town who is locked in the city basement. Justy says he saw something suspicious Wait. going on in the desert and points to another random sand Pokemon and free literally everyone in the town who is locked in the city basement. Just I'm um, surprised you didn't mention what it's Snapple? Snaddle. That's his name. Snapple's a T. <laughs> he has an interesting character design, and I'm pretty sure he uses the cast form. That's someone's Shadow Sky. Like Team Sky. New merch coming soon. <laughs> Justy says he saw something suspicious going on in the desert and points to another random sand spot on my map I should go investigate. Honestly, how are all these people just stumbling onto these shenanigans in the middle of the desert? And why are they able to give the latitude longitude of these locations after finding them? This has got to be like tens of miles out from any sort of civilization. This is where people run out of gas in their car and then shrivel up and die before anyone can find them. Why were you here? Wow. Yep. That's the cargo ship. How did you find this? All right, what is so <laughs> enthralling about this desert that crime and vigilante justice is constantly going on in every square inch of this place. Cypher is running around on the ship and after I take their shadow Pokemon and chase them out, this group of strangers calling themselves Team Snagum walks up. The bald men. Yeah. Fun fact, in Coliseum, the main character, Wes, was a member of this team and then blew up their hideout and uh, quit in spectacular fashion. And he was the only one who wasn't bald. And roofies me. I wake up, realize they stole my snack machine. This random old man who just started living in the wrecked boat said he saw them head off in that direction <laughs> and points to the middle of nowhere on my map again. <laughs> These people are beyond me. I show up <laughs> and wow, another headquarters for crime. I make my way to their head honcho, Gonzap, who's trying to put on my snag machine, but he's too big and muscular. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Since I am a child, it does not fit on his giant muscle arm. He pretty much gives up at the proportion design of the characters in this game. I forget how insane they are. Like, look at Gonzap. That man has skipped leg day from Earth. Asks if I want to join Team Snagum. I say yes, but he fights me anyway. And after I beat him, he's like, actually, you can have your arm thing back. We're not enemies. Awesome. So why am I here? <laughs> you drugged me, stole my stuff, and then just called friendship and gave it back. I find Cypher's shadow Pokemon factory and- Oh, I remember this thing. It was so cool. Walk up to the actual biggest men I've ever seen in the world. How naive I was to think Zook was big. Foolish me. Anyway, they're about to beat me TF up when Gonzap shows up, expresses his devotion to our new- Does Gonzap have heterochromia? Huh, I never knew that. Newly blossoming friendship and roofies them for me. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're really consistent at that. I go inside <laughs> and climb to the roof where their power generator is. There's a tiny little piece of paper there that says, use system lever to adjust voltage. Do not raise voltage too high. Crank! A guy comes <laughs> up and starts yelling at me with his Pokemon when the tiny old man who accidentally ruined my life in Gadion Port comes on screen and is like, I'm evil and creating a Pokemon that's unpurifiable. Come get me. This is my IP address. I need to cross the ocean to get to him because he's basically on evil Hawaii. So I take this Robo evil Kyogre Hawaii. from Kaming. Oh, the Robo Kyogre is so awesome. There's like a battle at one point you fight. Robo Groudon, but it's like, it's just, what is his name? The Sunkern guy in the Robo Kyogre outfit. It's kind of dumb, but the Robo Kyogre though, that's like actually a usable vehicle. So cool. Go speedboat my way there. And you Isle. fight everyone in the building slash volcano until I get to the big little man. After it's a big, it's it. 
It's a long trek to get through Citadark Isle, but it's a really cool one. There's so many different types of rooms you go through. There's like lava, there's regular metal rooms, there's like a, I think there's a whirlpool maybe at some point. It's just, it's just awesome. After fighting an entire country's worth of people, I find him, his name's Grievel by the way, and he's like, I'm surprised you made it this far. Ha 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 ha. Well, I'm busy, don't bother me. And blocks me with a giant pane of glass. <laughs> Honestly, out of all the fictional villains I've seen, this is surprisingly decently reasonable. But I'm not gonna just <laughs> sit here and stare at him behind the glass like a goldfish at PetSmart. So I just walk around and use the side door, which really oh, sets yeah. him off. I, I mean, forgot dude, about how silly that was. Door, don't have it. This is just what doors do. Gravel's like, you blew up our shadow Pokemon factory. You got past my glass. That's it. I'm summoning Shadow Lugia, the first yeah, Pokemon to ever be so cool. Come forth and obliterate this small boy. To which I just master ball it. There really you go. overlooked that one, didn't you, mate? He may not be purifiable, but he's mine now. <laughs> Huge L. Grievel is <laughs> so beyond pissed <laughs> that he decides to open his creepy eyes and fight me himself. And I was surprised to realize not only does he have a team of all shadow Pokemon, but he somehow nabbed Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. I remember, so in Colosseum, no trainer has more than one shadow Pokemon. This game. They start with just one, but as you advance, they get more. And the fact that the final battle is versus a team of six shadow Pokemon, Pokemon you like want to capture, not just flat out KO is so cool. I'll be honest, it was a really, really hard fight because shadow Pokemon are super effective against all non-shadow Pokemon. I don't know how it took me this long to tell you that, but that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> Yeah. Also, I just love this face. So instead of trying to catch them all, like I've been doing this whole time, I really just beat them up and they ran away. Well, they don't really run away. You just, you do the fight again later. That, that's how I've done it every time is I think I've caught like between one and three and then I've gotten the rest another time. <laughs> so I win. Cypher has officially lost everything and it's all because of me, the little boy. Blue henchman runs up to Grievel and is like, sir, I have a plan. Let's blow up the island with the kid on it. Which is like, oh my God. My and goodness. And Redman is like, okay, that's a bit too far, man. Dad, let's go home. Yeah, they pulled the I'm your father slash son twist on us, but it has very little effect on me because I do not care about these people. <laughs> anyway, they decide to not blow up the island with me on it and stop being evil. Oh, just realized Mira B's playing again. I think I'm like 60% sure. And then happy ending, I just go home. So what do you think? <laughs> it's it's amazing. It's so good. It's so fun. For some reason, I really liked the game as a kid. I never actually beat it because I didn't know how to get past the gatekeeping woman in Fennec. Glad I figured it out this time. I also wanted to mention how lively the animations are in this game. Sure, some of the Pokemon look god awful. They gave yep. Houndor human knees that bend forward, but they're all just <laughs> so expressive and show so much care and personality. It may be pretty sad the current games don't show this much passion, but I guess that's just what makes these games more cherishable. Anyway. Legends Arceus really advanced the modern animations, I would say. The fact that like if like the angle the Pokemon was sent out, it is not right. It'll like look down at the Pokemon and then it'll like shift to face it or like Luxray being in like a, a crouched like combat pose when it's like in a battle as opposed to when you just send it out and it's walking. Like I know there have been some blander animations, but like there have been some good ones more recently but there are some iconic ones in this jigglypuff literally deflates it turns flat it's amazing <laughs> anyway the game was fun and weird i liked it see ya hey well that was a great video i love that uh jaden's showing uh, a game that i love love she's she, she's showing it more love in addition to me. And also this is number one on trending at the time of me watching it. So that's good. More people are learning about it and it makes me happy. That's where I'm gonna wrap it up for this video. If you somehow aren't subscribed to Jaden, which I find very unlikely, but if you aren't, make sure you subscribe to her and me. And thank you so much for watching with an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support me independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link's in the description below. And if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.